Welcome to Peculiar Stories, where we explore the fascinating world of near-death experiences and offer new perspectives on the meaning of life and death. Our goal is to shed light on these profound stories, deepen your understanding of life, and provide valuable insights to our audience. Whether you're new here or simply joining us again, we're thrilled to have you on this journey. If you enjoy what we do, consider subscribing to our channel to stay updated on our latest content. And don't forget to hit the like button to help our content reach a wider audience. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be transported to the edge of life and beyond. In today's story, Hannah claims she experienced incomprehensible love and saw a bright light and explains what kind of nature we'll have after we die, then proceeds to share the meaning of the bright light. You simply can't afford to miss this amazing NDE. Without further ado, let's get to the story. My name is Kathleen Evans. And this LS my story. I was being dragged, my back to the direction of the pull, and my face to the earth. I don't remember ever seeing the earth. It was a gut feeling that I was leaving. I wasn't in a tunnel, as the phrase goes. Because of the enormous pace at which I was traveling, a tunnel formed around me. When I see the white markings left by a fast jet in the sky, I think about it. The marks were made by the jet. It's the same thing. There is no fear in this experience despite the fact that what was happening was unknown at the time. It was at this time that I understood I had left my body, that I was dead. I didn't mind what had transpired. I was at ease. The pace of movement began to slow, and I had the impression that I was nearing my destination. There were six spirits present, and I could clearly see them dressed in their earthly attire. Five of them were men. One of them was female. I did not know any of them from this life. I realized from a way that they all loved me completely, unreservedly, and intimately. I now think of them as my greeting party, who came out to meet me at a predetermined location. I had no ideas about it at the moment. I was at ease, happy, and liberated. They surrounded me with unconditional affection. Everything is on display. There are no feelings of shame, guilt, or deception. It's not possible there. There is complete comprehension without even considering the need to comprehend. Whole comprehension with absolute clarity is already present. I feel compelled to elucidate since there is a significant difference between our physical experience and the true, after-physical death reality. Everyone can see all you are, feel, think, and believe in this realm. Outside of your physical body, feel and understand with perfect clarity. I couldn't see what the spirits that had met me had done in their corporeal existence now that I couldn't see them. I could see, feel, and comprehend who they were on the inside just as clearly as they could see me. All of this occurs as a result of feelings slash thoughts occurring at breakneck speed. I could see their jaws moving as they spoke, but I did not hear the way we hear in the actual world. In physical life, the element of time as we know it does not exist. For example, one of the spirits who received me remarked to another soul, she's been through so much and she should be allowed to stay in a slow, begging, hesitating manner. At the rate he stated it, this would take 15 seconds to say in physical terms. Yet, it does not take long. Although it may appear unusual, it is instantaneous. An individual in contact realizes the sense of time. In physical terms, however, time does not exist. It's a magnificent language, absolutely clear, perfectly understandable, wonderfully liberated, and totally flawless. I never heard a tone that might be associated with a single voice. That is not the case. The tone is present. It's a tone that defines a specific soul rather than something physically audible. This is going to be difficult for you to grasp, so I'm going to give it my all. Everything is happening at the same time, or is overlapping at best. Imagine having a thousand things going on and people talking at the same time, absolutely comprehending every detail of everything. I could comprehend all six spirits conversing at the same time with perfect clarity, as well as knowing the deepest depths of their hearts, and a slew of other events and knowledge that I was privileged to learn, all at the same time. Because of the dynamics of the manner of communication, souls laid naked, plus you feel it and know it's the truth. There are no uncertainties about what is spoken, and I never doubt it. There's no reason to. I know instinctively that it's the true form of communication. I immediately feel liberated from all the constraints of physical bondage. You have the impression that you have arrived at your destination. I have no recollection of this location being my home. 
It was more of an innate and intuitive understanding that I belonged here. There are no doubts there. These are not feasible. Everything is perfectly clear information. The most important aspect of this encounter is love. I am completely consumed by a love that does not exist in our physical reality. No matter how much love you have for your children, it cannot compare to this love. This is the purest, truest, deepest, and most unconditional love you can conceive. Now I realize you're probably thinking, that's how I feel for my children. That's something I'd say as well. But it goes much beyond what these words can express. And I believe this is because it is communicated to you through feelings. It takes your breath away. As I received this affection, my mind was unable to comprehend it. It is felt by the soul. And the overwhelming feeling of this flawless love rushes right into your heart as a sensation. With a sudden swish of sensation, it can send your soul to its knees. This is not overpowering in a negative way. It's completely overwhelming in the greatest manner possible. You will never be the same after experiencing it. It's complete happiness. What you've always desired, plus so much more. I was astounded that I was so adored. I am still, and will always be. There is a bright light that I felt impelled to enter. I was unable to. At a distance, this light resembles those seen in a photograph of the sun's beams. When light is far away, its width is shorter, and the rays spread out as they move away from the source. The closer the light gets to you, the larger its point of origin becomes, until it is so close that it illuminates your entire viewing screen. This light is the source of the knock your socks off love, which is why my instinct urges, more please, I'm going there. That is not to imply that I did not experience tremendous affection from the specific people I met. I did. Einstein are uploading up to get together with. It's simply that when I realized there was more love, along with the awareness that this source of love was even closer to me in terms of relation, I desired it much more. It was as if the entity emitted that enormous affection for me was the most familiar with me. The love was out of this world in comparison to what a mother or father feels for their child. So, in a way, I was pulled to my closest relative, even though it was undeniably not the type of relative we encounter in the actual world. However, it felt more genuine than any physical relationship. I now consider this light to be God, and I'm thankful that this light showed me its love during my death experience. Now, I'll explain the experience in human words, though I believe these specifics are unimportant in comparison to the true and crucial parts I've attempted to explain. When I arrived at the location where the six spirits met me, they began to love me through their thoughts, feelings. I felt liberated and wonderful. At the same time, they were having a lengthy discussion about allowing me to stay somewhere I didn't know, but I was content to remain where I was. A deep blue-colored but not dark-feeling world surrounded them. It was enjoyable. There was no land available. It was more like they'd come to meet me in a location where there was no land. Yet it wasn't out of the ordinary. On the opposite. It felt more organic than soil. It felt natural. In my mind I can still see their expressions. They were all in agreement that I should be permitted to stay. I was overjoyed. I had no intention of returning. No way. That was beyond a doubt in my mind. I had been released from the physical body's confined jail. My intellect was a thousand times sharper, freer, and capable of operating at full capacity, which I was unaware was possible prior to my death. The affection was unparalleled. I would never return gladly. At the same moment, I was viewing a thousand images related to the cosmos and its history. I couldn't understand everything. But I was given complete understanding of life, with an emphasis on the importance of experiencing life as it is given. I wasn't taking part in the continuing debates about me. I was merely a bystander. The light then moved closer, and everyone became aware of it, and their attention was drawn to it. There was a brief pause as everyone's attention was drawn to the approaching light. A woman appeared in the light, entirely engulfed in it, the entire visual screen. Only she was encircled by light, not the other six souls. This is difficult to put into words. It's as if the entire screen of your view was filled with light only when you glanced at her. Nevertheless, when I glance at the other souls, I notice that they are all surrounded by a blue, peaceful background. Although having a harsh, disciplinarian expression on her face, the woman, like the other souls, loved me dearly. She was dressed in an older-style black gown with a matching hat. Her entire body was covered by the dress, up to her neck. She was an older woman with a weathered, craggy face, 
she was staring straight at me with an unbroken stare. The other souls were pleading with her to let me say something. She didn't say anything, thought of feeling. But she just kept staring at me, as though in intense analytical focus. There was a little lull after the other souls had pleaded to their heart's delight. She kept staring at me before saying, She goes back. My heart sank to the lowest depths. For the first time I spoke up pleading, No, no, please, no. She was stern. I informed her that I would not accompany her. My emotions burst into tears. I'd have to be coerced. Soon I saw I was floating above my body. Then a nurse applied ice on my chest and told me to wake up. I was naked without a sheet. I was disgusted by my own physique. I had no feelings towards it. The nurse softly but aggravatingly pushed my left arm twice while saying, Wake up. I then felt excruciating pain as I realized I was back in my body. My heart rate slowed. I was very disappointed to be back. The nurse noticed I had arrived. Open your eyes, she said numerous times. Then she began shoveling small spoonfuls of ice chips into my mouth, telling me that my fever was too high and that I needed to eat ice all the time. She continued to spoon it in until I passed out. Watch this near-death experience next about a stubborn woman who died and tried to argue with God to stay in heaven.